Well, um, welcome everyone. My name is um, Kelly Lanema. I'm the Assistant Director of the Department of Planning and Community Development. And we're really happy to see so many people here tonight. Um, thank you so much for joining us to talk about the Mystic River Path connection to the Minimum Bikeway Feasibility Study. Uh, so the town of Arlington has received funding through the Mass Trails grant program in 2021 to conduct this study. Our aim with this project is the development of a safe, accessible, separated trail between the Mystic River Path and the Minuteman Bikeway along the Mystic Valley Parkway and Summer Street. Uh, this is, we see this as an opportunity to increase connections for residents, for visitors to the park, um, to access to natural resource areas, and a way to improve our connections to our neighborhoods and businesses and through multimodal paths. We're really excited to be working collaboratively with a number of municipalities and organizations to accomplish this work. So I really want to thank our consultant tool design group. Um, we also want to extend special thanks to the Mystic River Watershed Association, um, the City of Medford, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, the Massachusetts Department of Conservation and Recreation, and MAPC. Um, and a special generous thanks to the Mass Trails Program and the Lawrence and Lillian Solomon Foundation for generously funding this study. You can go to the next slide. I'm sure right now everybody is pretty familiar with Zoom, but just a few meeting guidelines. Um, everyone's muted by default. And if you find yourself muted, um, it's nothing personal. We just have a lot of people here tonight. And so we want people to be able to focus on the presenter. Um, you'll have an opportunity to raise your hand and unmute during the Q&A session. Um, and you'll be unmuted during the breakout sessions for, for discussion. If you're comfortable, uh, feel free to turn on your camera. It helps kind of create a better connection between everybody in the group here. Um, you can use a digital background if you want. If you have a question during the presentation, oh, we do have the chat open. Um, the real purpose of the chat tonight is for Q&A and especially during the breakout groups. So we're really hoping that people keep from having side, please don't have side conversations in the chat, but reserve that for Q&A and for the breakout groups. And this main room, as you may have noticed, is being recorded. So we're gonna be posting this to the town website in a few days, along with follow-up information. Um, just a quick Zoom 101 in the bottom hand, in the bottom of your screen, um, there are mute and unmute buttons. Um, you can also raise your hand that's under the reactions tab. There's a little smiley face down there in the corner if you wanna raise your hand. And if you're calling in by phone, star nine controls mute and unmute and star six is to raise your hand. And so with that, I think we can go ahead and get started. And I'm going to hand this over to Stephanie Weyer from Tool Design Group. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Um, so yeah, I'm Stephanie Weyer. I'm a landscape architect with Tool Design Group and the project manager for this. Um, I'm also accompanied tonight by uh, Lucy Gibson, an engineer who's working on the traffic analysis and, and developing intersection safety, and Julie Shapiro, who's also a landscape architect to my office. Um, so we want to give you a presentation tonight and then really dig into hearing from you in our breakout groups presentation. I'm just going to briefly go over the project scope and timeline, um, our draft goals, which is something we want to review with you in the breakout groups as well. Um, then talk about uh, kind of go through the, the whole potential route and our existing conditions observations there, then just briefly talk next steps. We're going to have um, 10, 15 minutes for a question and answer, and we we'll kind of want to keep those questions focused on the project, anything you didn't understand in my presentation, because um, anything related to design and comments you have about your experience um, and what you want to see, we're going to record all of that in our breakout groups, um, which I'll describe more later. So the general timeline, we're trying to hit um, end of June as our deadline. Um, so right now, you know, we're in the middle of, or kind of coming to an end on our existing conditions analysis. You're a really big piece of that. Um, we wanna hear from you tonight um, to really get understanding of your experience um, and really beef up our um, ability to respond to what you want. Um, so we're gonna kind of wrap that up in February and then starting in February and through March, move on to developing some alternatives or cross sections um, you know, the different options for the path um, and also various options for each intersection that is part of this project and some planning for 
um, or different placemaking opportunities, such as where overlooks could go. Um, and we're going to come back to you probably late March with another public meeting. Um, April and May, we're really going to be refining those concepts based off of what we heard from you, also producing some maintenance recommendations. Um, and then May, June, we're going to be working to kind of package that all together um, and also blend, you know, what are the next steps? How do we get on to the next phase of design development for this path? Along the way, um, we, we do have a project team, basically all of the groups that Kelly mentioned um, are part of the project team. And so we're gonna be consulting with them um, throughout this project, as well as doing a focus group, different uh, you know, representatives and advocates, different interests, um, probably in March. Um, so we do have a lot of touch points. Um, the last public meeting will likely be in June to kind of give you a full picture and a, and a wrap up and the next steps. So generally, um, you know, we have a lot of different ways of communicating with you. Some of you might have received postcards from us if you are living nearby or are businesses nearby the path. Um, but you know, you might have heard through social media, through newsletters that you receive. I know Mystic River Watershed Association sent out a, a big newsletter blast. Um, you know, Town of Arlington has a project page for this. And your registration tonight, you're going to go onto an email list. So you will be emailed about upcoming public meetings. Um, so we were definitely going to be advertising the next meeting widely. Generally, for this and the next meeting, um, we're going to be trying to use a little bit of an interactive format, um, an inter interface called Miro, where we're able to kind of show you visuals and just take notes so that you can see us taking notes on the screen. Um, we also have, for both this and the next meeting, surveys. Um, if you're going to duck out tonight, definitely take the survey. We'd love to really get everybody taking the survey, and that should be um, copied in the chat below. Um, we'd really appreciate getting your feedback through this. It's pretty brief, um, and we're going to come back to it again at the end. You didn't get the link. So the draft goals. I know this is a lot of text. I am going to take the time to read through each one. Um, and again, we're going to want to get your feedback on these and just, you know, are we missing anything? So starting out, providing an accessible route that contributes to a regional biking network by connecting the Minuteman Bikeway, Mystic River Paths, and Alewife Brook Greenway. Strengthen the walking and biking network between Arlington, Medford, and Somerville by developing connections to perpendicular streets, sidewalks, and planned bike routes. Um, so we have the, the regional, local connections, and increase safety and comfort for all users, particularly at intersections and rotaries improve access to and views of the Mystic River and Mystic Lakes to enhance people's experience and draw them to these resources, reduce emissions by increasing bicycle mode share and incorporate planning and design concepts that contribute to climate resiliency, and finally preserve and enhance wetlands, trees, tree canopy, needs a spelling update, um, and animal and plant habitat. So again, we have you know, those network connections with regional and local safety and comfort, improving access to these great water bodies that we have, um, and then reducing emissions or really anything related to climate resiliency and um, supporting environmental values. So um, we've been you know, spending the past month or so um, kind of delving into existing conditions analysis. And I'm not gonna speak on any of what you're seeing here in detail, but this is a list of various plans that we've reviewed. We've also collected traffic counts for our various intersections, um, looked through geospatial or map-based data. Um, the graphic on the right is from the Connect Arlington Sustainable Transportation Plan. You know, So we've really been trying to base everything that we're doing in, in the plans that have come before and the recommendations that have come before. Um, Tonight, you know, we really want to focus kind of on the ground and get your feedback about what you're experiencing on the ground. Um, you know, broadly, we have some big picture or kind of big connections to make those perpendicular streets that I mentioned before. So this summer, um, the whole the whole route, I should say, kind of extends from Minuteman Bikeway. We're trying to figure out where, um, and then all along the Mystic Valley Parkway. 
just south of Lower Mystic Lake along the Mystic River and over to Elwife Brook Greenway. And you know, throughout here, we have the existing Mystic River paths. And so we're gonna see how we're gonna interface with those. But so those big picture connections we wanna make perpendicularly are the Summer Street, Mystic Street, Mystic Valley Parkway intersection, really making sure that anybody who's coming along Mystic Street can comfortably connect to the path and vice versa. Um, and then making these strong connections across the bridges to Arlington. So through the rotaries, um, and then across River Street Bridge as well. And I've got some orange boxes placed throughout, just kind of little pointers of things to for you to consider and maybe provide us some feedback on. You know, we're gonna be thinking about neighborhood connections as well. So some connection to small streets, we'll be basing part of that on, on safety and you know, what is a safe connection to make. Um, but we're really curious to hear about your experience and how you're connecting to um, the existing paths that are out there now. So I'm going to spend the next some odd slides kind of breaking down what, what we've observed um, in five different character areas. I'm going to start on the west here. So from the Mill Street and Cutter Hill Road intersection with Summer Street and then over Buzzell Field. Um, you know, so we have the Miniman bikeway down here. And again, I said we, we want to make a connection. We're trying to find out should that be through this intersection. Um, which also has the benefit of, you know, prevent, potentially kind of providing a more uh, bigger access from the west. Um, or do we come through Buzzle Field? And along Summer Street, then we're going to be heading out to the east here. Um, you know, we have a wide 38 feet to work with. There is informal parking throughout, and um, we understand that it gets quite busy on game days. Um, and one thing that we have to consider as we move, if we were to develop the path through Buzzle Field, um, is you know, on a game day, you have kind of a squeezed condition. Um, so how would the path interact with that? Um, you can see picture here of Summer Street. It's right now pretty, it's a busy road, um, right now pretty wide. So we have a lot of room to work with. Um, we wanna consider what side of the road should we be on? What do we do about parking? Um, just an example of some of the informal parking that's happening. Parking is restricted in some areas, not in others. Um, generally, we kind of see it happening throughout. And then at Mill Street, you know, we have a lot of pavement to work with. There are medians on all sides, turn lanes, wide receiving lanes. So Mill Street has the potential for some narrowing down um, and different geometric options through here. Um, so then moving on to Summer Street, Mystic Street and Mystic Valley Parkway intersection. You know, this is a very long intersection as you can see it here um, that's, that's offset as well. So Mystic Valley Parkway and Summer Street aren't quite straight on each other. Um, the crossings are long, the crossings on the north and east sides are, are 60 feet long. So it takes you a little while to travel through. Um, and here, this one on Summer Street is really about 90 feet along with the slip lane. Um, we want to consider what do we do about the slip lane? Um, do we keep it or, or not? Um, and how does that interact with the path and crossings? Um, another consideration here is the grade is going down about five to seven percent slope. Um, so that's both a consideration for visibility from the intersection and any traffic coming through. Also, anyone who would be coming up a path, um, you know, we want to consider how we make that slope doable for them. Um, and then finally, you know, I mentioned beforehand, we want to make that connection to Mystic Street so that anybody who's going to the path or going to Mystic Street um, all of this is very legible, navigable, easily, um, and easy to get through anywhere you're trying to go. Just some pictures here, you know, example of the length of this intersection. Um, the gas station on the northwest side here has a driveway that people are heading directly into. Um, if we have people coming through that we want to wait, um, you know, how does that intersect with the, the gas station? It's something we need to consider. Also, um, you know, the Duncans is a high use driveway. So that's over here. 
um, you know, we need to figure out what side of the road we're going to be on, and we're going to look at driveways like that um, to figure out what's really the logical side to take the path through. So Lower Mystic Lake, then, this whole section here um, is a little bit different character, much more woodland. We have this great, great opportunity with the lake um, and opportunities for overlooks and a little bit just stronger connection to the water. Um, the roadway varies a bit in width. It's narrower on the west side here, and we also have a number of neighborhood streets coming in here. Um, we're curious about potential connections um, through here. Um, it's a little wider as you go along, but regardless, we have room to work with the roadway um, to create a path. Right now, the path is fairly narrow, but we have, so that's about seven feet, but we have 10 to 12 feet here, and then the roadway has enough width that we can think about expanding into the roadway. Um, we want to consider, you know, what would the level of separation be? Um, one, one thing that I'm showing here is we do have a culvert uh, right here, on the left side of the lake. Um, and that's just something for us, uh, you know, to kind of think about in terms of capacity and, and what does the structure need need and maintenance. Um, so again, great views of the lake that we can develop. And then we have potential for some crossings. This is a high speed area. And with the curve of the road, we have more limited sight lines. So those are things we want to consider and how we would develop any crossings and where. The rotaries. Um, we have Medford Street through to High Street rotaries. We are considering both sides. They'll, they'll both have design alternatives applied to them because um, they work together as a system. And you can maybe see, it might be a little light in the photo, um, but there's a dark pavement and a lighter pavement. And this really kind of shows where people are driving, the part of the road they're actually occupying, and that we have a lot of excess pavement to work with to be able to really tighten up these rotaries. Another thing that's happening right now is these circles aren't very big and people can mostly make a fairly straight shot through if they are heading through. And so they can move pretty quickly. Um, so creating more deflection, creating you know, more of a, a circular shape that a vehicle needs to follow can help us slow people down. Um, again, we wanna make path connections on both sides of the bridge and there is you know, the Mystic River path extends on this side, so we want to make sure that as we're coming up through here, we're really making a connection to the, the actual path along the Mystic on the Medford side. Um, we also have a lot of room to work with on the bridge, so we have different options for how we could consider that connection. Um, there is transit coming through here, so anything we're designing, we also understand um, from conversation with the project team that there are occasionally school buses here, um, so just we acknowledge that our larger vehicles still need to make it through here. Just some pictures of that excess pavement, um, you know, just how very wide the bridges are. And then um, an added point is there's a lot of really beautiful trees along the whole project area. We want to make sure that we are you know, respecting those trees with any connections we're making off the sides of the paths. Um, and we have some topography to kind of respect as well in the design. So then finally, we're, we're gonna, this whole east end is gonna take in the full segment from south of the rotaries over to the Alewife Brook Greenway. Um, and it's he through here that the parkway is actually separating in grade from where the existing path is now. What the form of the path will be, um, you know, we have different options. It could all be a path down by the river, or we could consider some roadway side bike lanes um, or two-way bike lanes on the roadway itself. Um, but generally through here, we still have woodland into, as we get more to the eastern end, more trees on lawn. Um, so kind of this woodland to park experience. Um, we do have the River Street Bridge, so that's what's splitting each photo here. 
um, and the River Street intersection to, to think about. So we'd love to get input on how you're experiencing this intersection as well. Um, one big thing for us is to, to consider uh, you know, how do we connect through or where do we connect over this bridge? Do we stay back um, kind of in this mid block connection or do we bring people to the intersection or both? Um, and then just really we we want to think about some of the constraints This you can see is pretty narrow through here and again being respectful of the vegetation and environment throughout here. Um, and then finally, this is the Alewife Brook Greenway in the right of this photo and we just want to consider the alignment coming in to really set people up to, to transition there. So that's kind of the walkthrough of the different segments and our Miro boards have aerials that we'll be able to to use if, as you can, so that you can speak to those. Um, but really just wanna kind of go back to Connect Arlington and these plans that we were looking at and how these are guiding our priorities. You know, we really, this is a graphic from the Connect Arlington plan um, that's really showing how the town is, is prioritizing pedestrians first and then bicycles transit. Um, and that's really the vision for how this path is fitting into the whole network. Um, and then, you know, really prioritizing getting people out of cars and making it a great experience to be a walker or a person who's biking. The town, this is all, this plan is also from Connect Arlington. The town has identified the intersections that are in this project as high priority safety improvement, as priorities for safe improvement, safety improvements, excuse me. Um, and so the Mystic Summer, Mystic Valley Parkway intersection, the Rotary, River Street Bridge. Um, so one big reason this, this project came about is to be able to address those intersections. So it's a really great opportunity to make a number of safety improvements throughout. Um, just some, some brief data analysis here. You know, we, we did collect traffic data, but I'm not going to go through that, but just um, we did a preliminary crash review of MassDOT data between 2017 and 2020, and none of these intersections is, from the, a regional perspective, a very high crash intersection. They, they don't qualify on the Highway Safety Improvement Program list, which is top 5% five, 5 crash intersections. Um, however, you know, we can see it's the rotaries where we've had the highest number of crashes. Fortunately, no fatalities. There are also no recorded collisions with uh, cyclists or pedestrians in any of these intersections. Um, say recorded, because of course there's often conflict that, that occurs that we don't get in our records. Um, and so just a little picture there of what's going on. And then so that you know, we collected traffic data um, just to really get a sense of the current use patterns and, and what is to be able to model the capacity of the intersection and to be able to make recommendations for, for geometric changes, you know, layout changes to the intersection and operational changes. So what could we possibly do with signals to support the path coming through? Um, so, you know, things that we are going to be able to achieve with these layout and operations changes, slowing speeds of vehicles, making path users visible to drivers, um, going back to the, the pedestrians and cyclists as a bigger priority for the town. We also want to make sure that our designs are really expressing them as a priority, you know, in our intersections and through the rotaries. Um, and then finally, it should be easy for path users to know how to get through an intersection. And that's, I think, particularly going to be relevant at Mystic Summer, Mystic Valley Parkway. Um, so really make the path legible um, throughout. So that is really the existing conditions tour. Um, so the next steps are that we're going to be developing a memo um, and summarizing what we hear from you tonight for February. Then we're going to be taking our time in February and March to develop some alternatives. And then we're going to come back to you again um, in, in March with those alternatives to get your feedback and another survey. For now, again, here is our, our survey. Please take it, send it to your friends. And with that, I'm going to open up a, let's check our time here, question and answer period. We've got um, 15 minutes. 
really want to keep the questions focused on, you know, is there something in my presentation you need more information on? Do you have questions about the project process itself? If you've got thoughts about your experience and design ideas, save them for the breakout rooms. We'd, we'd love to record them all there. So I will, I see a hand raised. Dan, we will go to you. Just a quick question. Uh, is there any connectivity to the tri community like that being thought of or planned? In a greater sense, um, sure, but it's not a not a direct connection off of here. But I, I do think that's relevant or what are the larger connections and the directions that people are coming in from. Yeah, I'll jump in quickly. This is Amber uh, with the Mystic River Watershed Association because we we have that on our radar to look at potentially um, replicating some of the ideas and feedback that we have on this section up Mystic Valley Parkway on the east side of the lakes that does connect to the tri community. So it's the same group of stakeholders. It's just um, kind of moving our way through this area to make it better for walking and biking. So I think it will inform that and hopefully create another project. That's our hope. Okay. Yeah, I go that way sometimes. And I should say that if you haven't seen it, Mystic River Watershed Association has a great um, map on their site of the different greenway connections that they're hoping to make over time. So lots of different fun projects coming forward. Um, how about Dana? Yeah, so I'm a uh, regular bike commuter. When you're doing the design process, is, is there any thought given to how the, the paths are going to be maintained in the winter in terms of, you know, maintaining the ability to use them, you know, like who's going to plow them and, you know, how are you going to manage, you know, them getting covered in snow and, and stuff like that? Yeah, so I kind of glossed over it in talking about the timeline and scope, um, but we are going to be developing maintenance recommendations you know, from a planning level, but um, to, do, to develop them, we're going to be talking to the landowners and the people who would be involved in maintenance to see what is feasible and, and what's really necessary to make it a, a year-round path. So definitely something that we're thinking about. Joy? Hi, um, I lead bike rides for Arlington Community Ed and also bike in the area. Um, and looking at your map, it looks like the project scope ends at Alewife Greenway, but would you consider, because there's the new Green Line station at Tufts, um, going down around the rotary toward Boston Avenue? because then there's a bike lane on Boston Avenue that goes um, to what will be the new Green Line train station. So to, to end the path at Alewife Wife Brook Greenway is just short of continuing it around the curve to, um, to get to where Boston Avenue crosses Route 16. It's just a thought. I think it's, it's a good thought. Um, I think the connections and setting up that connection for the future are definitely something that we should think about. Um, Amber, I saw you unmute. Did you yeah, have this more? Is just, this is another example of this is a town of Arlington owned project. So kind of started with that center of gravity. But of course, these all connect to surrounding communities and there's a regional nature. So certainly all of these groups are thinking about what leads to the next connection and so on. So Absolutely, but we always have to kind of draw the line somewhere for these. Thank you. And Tony, I'm going to figure out how to undim my display here in a second. Uh, right, Stephanie, thanks. we're also going to call on Roderick when um, we get a chance after Tony. Oh, I am not seeing Roderick. He couldn't use his hand um, thing, so we've been chatting. Okay. After Tony. Cool. I, yeah, wasn't staring at the chat. Go ahead, Tony. Okay, yeah. Hi, yeah, my, my question is kind of similar. If there's any sort of discussion or talks or thoughts about um, uh, connecting this to this path uh, to get away into sort of downtown Medford through the clipper ship connector um, and other parts of Medford um, uh, that are hopefully planned and, um, and, and don't currently exist. 
I think my response is the same in that we're, we're definitely going to be setting up connections across into Medford. Um, and, you know, thinking about those wider connections, um, but generally the scope of the project stays near the river in terms of the actual alternatives we'll be developing. Um, and then to Roderick. Uh, hi, thank you. Um, the, I don't know, just a couple of, of quick points. I, what I see, I, I ride this area a lot. And what I see is that cyclists tend to use the roads through here. Um, uh, pedestrians use the path along the river. Uh, and it, there's very little um, deviation from, from that. Uh, uh, second thing, um, ri uh, River Street is a very good way to, to cross the river, very simple. There, there, you know, is, is a bit of a weight at the light, but that's manageable. And um, uh, beyond that, the um, most of the sort of interesting uh, riding is on the Medford side, uh, right up along the east side of, of the Mystic River and then the, the east side of the Mystic Lakes. Um, so it's it's really kind it's kind of an integrated Arlington Medford experience. It's possible to ride around the, the top of the upper Mystic Lake and across the average on a ride right along the the top of the upper Mystic and then down um, Cambridge Street and Mystic Street in Arlington and, and then down again. Um, I ride that route a lot. Um, I ride the uh, Minuteman bikeway a lot. I seldom ride both in the same um, period. So this, this is potentially interesting. We hope so. Uh, uh, one, 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 one other thing. Um, what I've observed um, is that pedestrians, again, mo almost entirely on the little path along the river, uh, do tend to, to cross River Street up by the bridge rather than down at the intersection. And this is very informal and everybody is careful not to get killed. Thank you. All right, soon let's go to you. You are unmuted. Oh. Yeah. We can we can both see you and hear you. Yeah, I think he's actually on his bicycle at this moment. Okay, well, let's go to Dennis. Hello. We can hear you. Hi, uh, I have two comments about uh, A and B. Uh, uh, at point B, there is a gas station. You said you will uh, think about which side you you will pass. The uh, cars go in and out of that gas station. I had a lot of conflicts. I was thinking maybe a, a diagonal crossing. Uh, to the other corner might be a better idea to avoid, assuming gas station is going to stay there. And um, about A, you were saying we are considering which option. Why not both? So keep the longer one through Mill Street for bike heavy traffic and the other one for pedestrians, maybe. So it's shorter, but uh, maybe not ideal for bikes, but pedestrians. Yeah, this could be an option. Thank, Thank you. you. And Kevin. Yeah, uh, two observations. One is, uh, I, I, given how well uh, River Street and Arlington 
crosses into Harvard uh, Street in Medford, it, it really is, I think, the preferred way, particularly for inexperienced uh, cyclists to cross between the two and avoid the rotaries entirely. But what I do think the opportunity is that at, at both the River, River Street Harvard and at the Medford Street High Street is, is the movement along the river, which is hard today, that if you are coming from, from either the Mystic River Path or the Alewife Brook Greenway, um, there is not a good way of getting across Harvard Street um, and the other thing about Harvard Street there is they really, on the bridge anyway, it really is over wide. It's almost like you could put a whole second sidewalk next to the sidewalks that are there on Harvard Street, um, both to narrow the width of the crossing of Harvard Street and to uh, make it easier to move, uh, to do the river crossing on Harvard Street. And then similarly, this going along the river at the double rotaries, um, I think someone else mentioned it, that um, a lot of people choose to walk to the, to the high point of the bridge on the river before they cross north to south there. Uh, it puts them, it, it limits the number of, of flows of vehicles that they have to think about. There's just one coming from the left and right. Um, so there's a strong pedestrian desire line across the bridge there at the double rotaries in the middle of the crossing. And then kind of the challenge is, well, if, 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 you're, on, if you're on your bike, what's the right way to, to just go along the river uh, through there? Um, and I do do that every morning or three times a week, but I always make sure to just turn right from the bridge onto the parkway and I also avoid the conflicts at, at B by turning right there and just staying away from everything else. Um, but I think that, that, that uh, yeah, those are, to me, the two opportunities are uh, along the river, how do you move upstream, downstream, uh, rather than between the two uh, towns. Thank you. Um, so we're gonna take Emily and Gerard and then we're gonna hop into breakout groups. Um, Stephanie, I do wanna raise one question that someone had on a chat that's a very much a context setting question too. So um, maybe those, the ones that you called out and then we'll end with that. Yep, sounds good. Um, thank you. I have a quick question about signage um, and whether that's part of the design process and where it comes in. Um, one thing that is a really common um, what my kind of common ax to grind about a lot of the connections that we already have in this overall region is that in a lot of places, the connections, especially for bike paths and off off road routes really are there, but you can't necessarily see the next part of it from the end of the previous and there aren't signs that show you where to go. So we have a lot of facilities that are actually really useful and can get inexperienced riders to a lot of useful places, but people have no idea where they are or how to get from one to the other. There was even some things in the chat today saying, you know, explaining how you can make some of these connections. And these are the things that already exist. And it always seems like the wayfinding signage that just tells you, this is the name of the path that you're on this is the name of the thing you're connecting to. Here's a chain of signs where you can see from the one sign, you can see to the next sign and you can see to the next sign and you can see where to go. You know, it does, um, it does a couple things. One is if you're just kind of tooling around and you're driving around, you can see that there is something to go somewhere. It tells you that it goes somewhere useful. Um, and you don't have to be following your phone like this or trying to pull up a DCR PDF on your phone or something like that um, to get where you're going. And, it, and I think it just, it also raises awareness of the connections that we have, but that step seems to get lost so much of the time because we have so many of these places where there's a path here and a path here. It's really easy to get from one to the next, but you have to just already know that. And if you don't already know that, or if you didn't, 
you know, previously start by making that GPS map or something like that. You just think you came to the end of the path and that's that. Um, and so, I'm, and it seems like such a crazy step to miss because signage is absolutely the cheapest possible component of any of this. Um, so I'm wondering if that's incorporated into the design process as you go so that we know that, you know, once, once these connections are made, people will find them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And I'll just briefly say that, you know, while it won't be the scope of this project to, of course, design the signs um, or really designate everything that's on the signs, making recommendations for potential, um, you know, sign opportunities, um, and that signs need to be incorporated in how we really develop the legibility and navigability of the path is definitely something that'll make its way in there. Um, so Gerard. Oh, thank you so much. This is phenomenal. And uh, I want to thank my Medford uh, friends as well. There's definitely a low hanging fruit connecting um, near Whole Foods to the beginning of the Mystic Valley Parkway. But um, I guess my only question or point would be, can we have both worlds when we have Mystic Valley Parkway? For example, uh, I think Roderick kind of alluded to it earlier. Can we have a, a path right along the river, which I think would be ideal for when you're riding your bike slowly, uh, maybe some decking or something to stop from time to time for overlooks. But at the same time, could we not also have the Mystic Valley Parkway with some um, better lines or maybe take a little bit of that space? Because when I'm on my road racing bike, I go down Mystic Valley Parkway and I buzz right along there. I feel safe. I wish I had a little more room. Uh, but when I go casual, I'll take my uh, hybrid bike along the river. So. I would just hope that we could make this maybe the best of both worlds from uh, letter D to E all the way to L. But other than that, this is phenomenal and looking forward to more info. Yeah, great, great point. And definitely as we're looking toward alternatives, we'll be considering whether there's a, a mixture involved. So Amber, are you looking at the DCR question from Phil? Um, I answered that in the chat. They've been at the table and at meetings with us. Um, which is good because we wanted to get them involved from the very early stages. And this is a mass trails grant, which is, is administered through DCR. So there's a connection there. Um, the clarifying question came from Thomas, which is very similar to what uh, Dreyer was just speaking about. So I think it sets us up well. Um, is the intention of this project to install a new paved off street path for use by cyclists and pedestrians? So the answer is it's not totally straightforward. We wanna create safe grade separated routes, but I think we are taking into account this kind of like different uses by bicycles. And you can speak more intelligently to this, Stephanie, but um, that, that's really what this phase is, is exploring all the options and how the different modes and comfort levels fit together and we can support all of them. Yeah. Um, so just seeing the time, um, I do see there are more hands raised, but we're going to jump into breakout groups. Um, we will probably have a little time afterward for a few more questions or any really salient questions that came up in your breakout groups. Um, so I just want to briefly go to um, just say we're going to have 30 minutes for breakout. Um, so we definitely welcome a lot more comments like we've been hearing. We really appreciate the feedback. We're gonna just spend a few minutes going over goals and getting any input you might have on those. And then just like you've been talking about, you know, what are your concerns? What is your experience? Um, you know, whether that's through intersections or along the whole of the paths, um, what are the opportunities you see? Um, you know, that includes neighborhood connections, potential amenities, you know, somebody already mentioned wayfinding. Um, so we want to make sure we're really covering both the concerns and the opportunities. Um, so you're, you're going to be put into a group with a facilitator who's going to take notes for you in Miro. Um, that person is, is mostly a scribe. They may not have the ability to answer all your questions, but we will be recording your questions. Um, again, if there's questions that seem like they should be answered for the full group, we'll address those after the breakout room. If you don't get your question answered, if it's something based on design, we're going to come back in the next meeting and we're going to be trying to speak to some of the questions you have then in that second meeting. Um, slash, we might also be able, if, if there are a number of questions or commonly asked questions, to send out a follow-up email. 
So with that, I think Kelly is going to get our breakout groups going. So actually, Doug is going to put us out in breakout groups. I think we have groups of about 14 right. to 15 people. So uh, when you see a, see a invitation pop up on your screen, please hit accept. We're all back. Well, I know I had a really great informative session. Um, hope you did as well. Would any facilitator, if you had a question that rose to the four of your group that needs to be answered, could you enter that in the chat, please? Hmm. Like a context setting question or like a question, a bigger picture question? Either one. We can we have we have a few minutes left here. We're gonna you know, close the meeting down at nine. Um, and again, I'll just I'll just give you, you know, the next steps are we're gonna be taking your feedback and turning these into evaluate to um alternative evaluations and, and coming back in late March with another public meeting. Um, so yeah, we have about 10 minutes for, for questions or anything that came out of these groups. So Amber's typing in saying, our group was wondering what improvements could be made in the short term, especially for the crossings of the high street rotaries. And and so I'll, I'll just say to that one, um, you know, there are, are various things we can look at. We talked a little bit about in my group, the different kinds of um, temporary or tactical materials that could be used, just flex posts or things that could go in kind of quickly paint. Um, so there are different solutions that um, we can provide more on in the next meeting. How can the goals and designs best reflect or accommodate cyclists of differing ages and abilities? So we, we also got this comment, um, and this is something that we're gonna be working on a bit with the, the focus group and trying to get input for different needs that need to be considered, um, you know, ways that we can make, uh, since this is planning level, I think you know, recommendations that would be taken forward into the design um, for signage, accessibility, um, you know, things on the ground that make things uh, a little bit more clear. Uh, we need to consider with the path if we had any bike parking mixed in, um, you know, the sizing of those spaces to allow different sizes of um, you know, bicycles and trikes through. Um, a lot of things that we'll need to give thought to and, and come back on to, but we are definitely thinking about both pedestrians and, and people on bikes and, and all different kinds of users amongst those groups. And I should also say that, you know, by law, we're going to be developing an ADA accessible path, but generally we try to exceed that um, and make sure that we're really making more of a universal design. Oh, now there's a lot in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna move faster. Um, so comment on Buzzle Field and please not bisecting it. Do the high volume of use for multiple sports and past recreation. Um, challenges for pedestrians, especially at the rotaries. What's the possibility of quick build mid bridge crossing? I think we're going to have to give some some thought to those quick build solutions and, and come back to you. I'll add my suggestion for high street paint a crosswalk on the bridge right above the middle of the river. And let's see. Okay, so a lot of good design design feedback here. Yes, yes to lots of ideas for tactical short-term solutions. Um, I will say we, we got the comment as well in our group about separating you know, people who are biking and people who are walking. Um, so we're gonna be thinking about that going forward 
um, any off-road path would need to be wide enough for two-way use. It's, this is a group with thoughts. I love it. And please take the survey as well. Um, Julie, would you mind copying back in the link for the survey too? Um, we also got comments about that hill climbing, uh, you know, toward Mystic Summer intersection. We were definitely going to be thinking about how to make that look, how to make that easier. Yes to more crossings. Um, good point on the public restrooms, you know, as we can you know, think about recommendations for amenities. Um, you know, we're going to be kind of doing a placemaking plan where we're at kind of figuring out what might fit where um, we will be looking at the different amenities that could make it into the design. And we'll bring that back in the next meeting for your feedback. Lots of thoughts on crossings. So somebody's commented on the experience of the wooded natural feel of the path. Um, I think this is a, a priority for us as well. Um, really you know, keeping with the environment and, and not destroying that experience and really trying to bring people to the lakes and you know, do that through this kind of natural experience all along the path. Stephanie, we had a good point in our group that was actually just cut off as we rejoined the big room, but um, about looking for more connections to existing natural areas along the path. So taking advantage of views of the lake along the proposed facility, but also um, can, making some better connections with parks that are already, already there and um, building out that network. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Preserve the trees, water for people and pets, drinking fountains. All right, um, we are getting close to time here. Really love everything that has been thrown in here. Julie, could I also ask you to go ahead and do a big sweep of this chat? Um, so you can see we got all of your notes. I know I got a lot of really great um, specific thoughts in, in my um, meeting. And so we're gonna be taking all of that and coming back to you. We'll summarize in the next meeting some of what we heard both in this meeting and from the survey, uh, which is again, just, Julie just dropped it in the chat there. Um, so we look forward to talking to you again probably late March. And thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. Thanks for this presentation. It was great. Yes. Uh, thank, thank you, you for your work. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Good night. Good thank you. Being here. Take care. Thanks a bunch. Hey, thanks for the Medford people for turning out. Absolutely. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Come to our meetings once in a while. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> All right, Stephanie, I have a copy of the chat as well. So great. Yeah. All right, take care, everyone. I'm going to close this down. Thanks. Right, thank and thank you, facilitators, Bye, for all of your help. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Right, bye.